Ireland against South Africa this weekend, folks. Number one in the world against number three in the world. And these guys haven't played for like five years. Uh, it's a pretty tasty looking one. We're going to go through some squads, some stats, recent history predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. But I reckon, I mean, this is maybe the game of the weekend, at least on paper. Uh, if you want to watch it and you're in the States, Flow Rugby, link down in the description. They've got this game. The games that were on last week, the uh, other games from the Autumn Internationals, a bunch of rugby on, so check Flow Rugby out. Um, yeah, Ireland. They've named a pretty consistent side from the team that played a wee while ago now, down here in NZ. They managed to walk away with that series win. Uh, Porter and Furlong are two of the, the premier props in World Rugby. They'll certainly be getting a test against the, uh, the two Springbok boys, who would also be vying for a kind of similar claim, and then Dan Sheehan in terms of uh, hookers is among the most dynamic as well. So it's a pretty tidy front row. Tyke Byrne, James Ryan, second row. Tyke Byrne, certainly among the most dangerous guys at the breakdown and uh, handy at lineup time as well. James Ryan, um, his career trajectory seemed to take a little bit of a blip, but I think he's coming into some. Uh, some pretty decent form after starting his career pretty much at the top level. And it's always a hard one to maintain. Uh, Omani, Van der Fleer, and Doris, same back row that played down here in NZ. Uh, Van der Fleer was probably the standout from the three of them, but all three of them, you know, bring their certain elements to the game. Omani, line out time, Van der Fleer, tackling, ball carrying, turnovers. He's a machine. And uh, Kalen Doris with that big old leg drive of his, uh, imposing, imposing character on the game. Uh, my neighbors are getting their bathroom done. If you can hear some grinding in the background, that's um, that's them chopping some stuff. They've been doing it literally all morning. Um, Con Murray and Johnny Sexton, 19 combo. That's kind of a bit of a blast from the past. It's been Gibson Park a lot in recent times. But Gibson Park, I don't believe, has played a game this season. He's been uh, out injured. Murray's going to get his 100th game for Ireland in this uh, game this weekend as well. So big congratulations to him. It's obviously nice to start the game if it's your hundredth. Um, Sexton is certainly going to have the experience edge over his um, his South African counterpart. But um, Sexton's a weird one that like his reputation tends to fluctuate between like hero and zero with some fans. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, us New Zealand fans can be very much the same with our coach, can't we? But when Ireland lose, Sexton's like too old and you know, needs to be put out to pasture. And when Ireland win, Sexton is like a legend and Ireland doesn't have anyone else quite able to fill his shoes. Uh, Henshaw and Ringrose is the midfield. That's a wee bit of a change from New Zealand because remember, Ringrose was out with like a fractured jaw in that series. So uh, he's in at 13. Henshaw switches back uh, to a more familiar 12. Bella Coon on the right wing is one of the least experienced guys in the squad, but the guy is absolute lightning. Remember, James Lowe is injured, so Max ha Mac Hansen takes the left wing spot instead of right. And then Bella Coon, kind of that lanky running style of his. He's deceptively quick, so um, right wing for him. And then Hugo Keenan, another one who I don't think has played at all this season, is going to have to hit the ground running, but he's a classy operator at 15. So, um, yeah, he'll be... Tested under the high ball, no doubt. Uh, replacements, Herring, Healy, and Bielema as steady as she goes. Trevor, Jack Conan, likewise. Gibson Park, as I mentioned, is on the bench, which is unusual in recent times, but as I mentioned, has not played a lot of rugby. Uh, Carberry's there, and McCloskey is in. Big unit of a man. Uh, I hope he gets some decent game time, but we'll kind of have to wait and see. For the South Africans, uh, Interesting selection calls in some areas. I mean, the Ford pack is pretty steady from their rugby championship side. Kits off Marks and Malherba. I think this is possibly the two best front rows in the world up against each other. France would certainly have something to say about that, but these guys have got to be top three. Ireland, South Africa, and France, kind of whichever way you rank them. I mean, you might have someone else in there, but come on, guys. They're, they're, they're pretty tidy. So, um... Yeah, kits off Marks and Malherba at scrum time is going to be an absolutely fascinating one to watch. Uh, Eben Elizabeth and Lut Diaka, likewise, uh, two of the world's premier locks. Like as good as um, as your man Tyke Byrne is at the breakdown, Lut Diaka will disrupt your line-out ball for days. So kind of very different players. Elizabeth, speaking of big humans like James Ryan, they don't come much bigger. Uh, Colisi, Peter Steff, and Jasper Visa are in the background. Interestingly, I think of the three guys... At least in the rugby championship, Jasper Visa's value was probably the most on display. The guy's ball carrying. He's another one that some people don't like. Um, 
I guess because he's like competing with Dwayne Vermeulen, who's not in the squad at the moment, because uh, the coaches have said he's already got enough experience. Doesn't really need a bit of extra game time, but Visa with his ball carrying is just immense. He's a proper, proper unit. So I look forward to seeing him and uh, Kalen Doris go up against each other. Jaden Hendrickson and Damian Villanza is not the most experienced 19 combo you will ever see. Damian Villanza is certainly a utility guy. Uh, he plays 10, he plays 12, he plays 15. Um, but with Pollard out, with Yankees kind of, I uh, think, in rehab, so it falls upon Damian Willems to be the guy for the Springboks. Um, I back him, man. Like, I feel like he's settled down mentally in the last, I want to say, 12 months. Like, he's always looked a little bit jittery. Uh, but he seems to be finding his feet and being, uh, I don't know, just confident in what he's doing. He's always had the skills, I think. But uh, he seems to finally have the execution to go with it. So, um, yeah, man. Like, Jaden and Damien up against Connor and Johnny. It doesn't get much different on the experience scales, but like it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. If you're good enough, you're good enough. Uh, Damon Delander and Jesse Creole, 12-13, obviously without Lacanio Um. The Springboks are certainly missing that bit of X Factor, but Jesse Creole defensively has been really good. It'd be nice him to see, I don't know, just a little bit more spark on attack if Damien gives him the ball. Uh, Kirtley Aronson, Makazola Mapimpi on the wings. And then uh, Cheslin Colby at fullback. Colby at fullback is an interesting one because he's not played that much fullback. I don't think he's ever played fullback for the Springboks. I mean, he started as a fullback, I think, with the Stormers. He's played a bit of everything over in France. He's played 10, he's played 14, he's played 15. So, yeah, I'm just pleased to see Ches Cheslin Colby back because we didn't see him in the Rugby Championship. Um, him and Kurt Lee aren't the biggest guys, eh, in terms of just their stature. But, I mean... How tall is Hugo Keenan? He doesn't seem that tall. He's probably like six foot, is he? Um, but yeah, battles in the air between all these guys could be um, could be could be telling. Bongi and Bonambi, Ox and Che and Vincent Cock, uh, the bomb squad. If they bring them all on at the same time, should be looking to add a bit of impact. Bongi at mall time is certainly one to look out for. Uh, Mostert, Fouri, and Cocker Smith means there's only spots for two backs on the bench, which is Fafta Clerk and Vili Larue. Uh, apparently Cheslin is covering 10 if needs be so um, yeah we'll see how that goes if Dion Fari comes on um, he'll certainly give Ty Byrne a uh, run for his money at the breakdown uh, stats it's going to be fascinating in that South Africa this year are the least passing squad of all the tier 1 nations of all the games they've played this year they just don't put the ball through the hands you're averaging just over 100 passes a game. They are coming up against their kind of, what is it, antithesis? Like Ireland play the ball through the hands more than any other team by quite some way. Like Ireland pass like 200 times a game. I think it's, it's either just under or just over 200 times. Like the All Blacks who pass it a lot are like at 160 times. Most teams are like 120, 130, 140. So the South Africans are quite low and the Irish are crazily high. So just the contrast of styles, that is interesting in itself. That's just rugby, right? Different ways to skin a cat. Uh, but interestingly, they both get kind of similar results out of it. Like they, they both get, you know, uh, crank through the run meters and beat defenders and whatnot. And they're both pretty stingy on defense. They both average like three clean breaks conceded a game. So they're very hard teams to break down. Only France has better numbers than those teams uh, in that regard. So um, yeah, I wouldn't expect... A super open game when these two teams go up against each other. The Maul is certainly going to be interesting. Uh, South Africa Maul it more than any other team of all the Tier 1 nations. But Ireland's Maul is also pretty good. And I don't think Ireland have conceded a Maul try this year. Not that I can remember. So, um, yeah, man. Just these two teams going up against each other is fascinating. Uh, recent results, if you can call them recent. The recent or last five matches between these sides... Uh, it goes in Ireland's favour 3-2, um, with the most recent one being 38-3, a pretty comfortable Irish win, but that is all the way back in 2017, so as I said, a lot has changed between then and now. Um, the average score across the last five games is 26-18 to the Irish, but as I said, how much that is relevant, uh, you know, we're not talking last five years really, so not that relevant. 2012, last South African win on Irish soil. So it has been a wee while. 
Um, predictions wise, the Irish are the favourites to retain their number one spot in the world and I think the Rayburn Shield, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Ireland by four is what the bookies say. And uh, Ireland by nine is what the rugby forecast algorithm says. It is, I think, a five, is it 5.30 local kickoff? So it's kind of an early evening game. It is in Dublin. Uh, Nika Abusha Kelly, the Georgian, is the ref. I think it's 6.30 New Zealand time in the morning. So certainly my breakfast time is going to be spent watching this one. It's going to be fascinating, as I mentioned. Really looking forward to seeing these two teams go back up against it. The kit clash could be horrendous. Uh, Russi says that Ireland's second kit looks different enough from the South African kind of green kit that there's not going to be a clash. But sometimes when you look at those kits, like on the websites or just even next to each other, they look that different. But then when there's 30 guys running around on the field and the camera is kind of quite far back, it can look absolutely nuts so we will see if there is a kit clash it may be pretty tough on the eye if uh it's a bunch of green running around rugby's got a bad i don't want to say a bad issue but more than other sports rugby gets the kit clashes wrong i think so um yeah anyway you guys know these thoughts on the game you think south africans are going to go into ireland get a long awaited away win can they take number one spot away from the irish or do you think the irish are going to kind of double down. Remember, these two teams are in the same pool at the World Cup as well, so it adds that bit of extra spice. You guys let us know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.